Yeah, I'll tell you what I did this week, and and what I've what I you know what you know what you know first what I'm gonna do. Hold on. I, I think I think I just need to punch it. I think I there. It it's done and set. Go on. Well, go ahead. Okay, you done now? You got it? Okay, good. There we go. I. I'm I. I this is what I've done this week. Here, I'll scale myself down to size like the pastor always wanted. You know, I tell you, isn't it suspicious? Before I be, be before I get into what this is, uh, here, there, okay, because it's it, it's actually like here on my screen over here, like what there, but it's so. Before I get into this, is that yeah okay. Now that I'm all, all right. <laughs> Isn't it interesting that that Sony and Sony is a, is a non-Christian. I mean, they're, they're not Christian. Isn't it interesting that Christian pastors feel the same way? about Christians as Sony felt about Michael Jackson. They didn't want a free agent. Isn't, isn't that just interesting that the secular company Sony, they're, they're, they're not liking Michael Jackson for buying 50% of Sony or records or however that worked. That their, their distaste for Michael Jackson being a free agent is the same feeling that Christian pastors have for Christians who do the same thing. Isn't that just, I'll tell you what, if you find a Christian pastor who loves free agents, who loves people, he doesn't have a little string that he can, you know, pick up and control them with, that is a special, awesome pastor. That right there. I, th I think that you should attend his, whatever he's got, whatever he calls it, if, you, if he's into that whole plurality of church thing, that like there's more than one church, even though there's only one. But I mean, you, you say there's more than one God, the Christians get angry. You say there's more than one church, they don't, even though there's only one church. Uh, th that's, but anyhow, if you find a pastor who's not angry about free agents like Sony was about Michael Jackson, Th that pastor needs your money. He needs your time. Your, give, love him. He's probably going to come under attack from a whole bunch of other people because he's for not supporting the guild. Now, this is what I wrote this week. Uh, I've been doing serious, heavy editing. Uh, the, the end uh, study space is... It, it's a book. It, 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 but watch Dan Pray 365. Now... There's two ways to view this. You can view it in order, read, you know, about 365, what is it? But anyhow, you, you can click on this, you can go read. I think you can click on this, it does the same thing. Is that right? Ooh, look at that, it's the same. The more, you know, it, it's it's 365, uh, what is it? Pithy, positive, heart-probing reads with 365 words each. Uh, well, it says positive, pithy, but... I've only got about 35 left to write. They're in waiting. And if you click on most recent here, it's at 205 is what I've got up and published. But I've got only 35 left to write, 11 more to edit. And I think seven of those, I think are already edited. I just need to make sure that I edited them. I've only got four left to edit, 35 more to write. And I'm done. And I, I mean, I, I was... A, I, I edited like 40 of these in one day. I'm so happy. And I'm, I'm getting to the point where it's like there's a light at the end of the tunnel. I mean, this is, if you haven't seen the website behind me, this is dark. And it did it, very lots of black. But there are these white words that illuminate everything. And you can see that, uh, that little flame guy up there. Uh, that's, that's actually the the IHOP KC flame on the altar, you know, keep the flame on the altar burning 24 seven prayer type of idea of the house. Well, I rounded the edges cause this is organic. I stood it up cause it's a person and, and I, I put his hands up in praise cause he's walking, walking, moving, working, 
uh, you know, he's he's the image of God, the image temple of God moving out sort of thing. So I actually borrowed that and I even showed it to their their uh, their COO, um, uh, John O'Hall, who I think is leaving or in that capacity or whatever. But anyhow, different, you know, that people shuffle around their 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 CEOs and their whatever. So I'm thrilled about this and I'm asking myself what the next step is going to be for me. I mentioned that in the, the 10 minute uh, regular podcast this week. Where am I going to go next? And I, I think what I'm going to do is once I've got this set up and squared away and, and available in print, I still may need to see there, there are these at some, the end of some of these, there are these Bible verses that you run into once in a while, but I don't know if I'm going to keep the Bible verses there. I'm wondering what I'm going to do with that. But as soon as I've got this squared away and ready for print, there, yeah, see Bible verses here? And you don't have to read them, but I don't know. I don't know. I might, I might get the Bible verse companion guide as a later thing when it comes to the printed book. I don't know. Haven't decided. I don't know. But once I get this squared away so that it's printable, printable as, as like a, an initial test run, initial first edition, probably going to have some typos in it, but it's all been read through. Once I got this all squared away, coming up here in August, I'm going to go over here. Uh, th this is my other project. What I'm going to, which I'm going to talk about this a little bit later on. This is my, oh, you like this awesome sound. <clears throat> Isn't that so great? It almost sounds like I could be, well, I, I wouldn't need a reverberator if I were to be president and wanted to sound presidential. Hold on. This is my little software project. This is kind of where a lot of my Linuxness comes down, which I've talked about in the past. And as, as it, this is where you learn Linux. This is the guru. You know, click on this. Verb. You see how I went to verb.guru? Ah, rewind it and watch it again. Here you can learn Linux. I think I explained this last week a little bit, didn't I? I'm going to focus on these and I'm going to make video tutorials once I get Watch Stand Pray 365 done. And it shouldn't take too long. I've got a little bit to add to Shell 301 and, and then I'm going to go on uh, to you know, to other projects, but I want to get video projects up here. In fact, here's what I'm going to actually do. I'm going to take this and I'm going to create little downloadable repositories. You could just watch the video and, and see how everything works, but you can also follow these tutorials without, uh, you, no video. You can just read them. A teacher could assign them in class. So I'm going to make little repos, if you know or care what that means, whatever. A teacher could download this, run a program. I've already written a little program. It's a shell program, of course. This is the shell. Shell is the language. And, and you, a teacher will be able to compare the the, the correct version of the files to what the student has been doing to see if it's been done correctly. So teachers would be able to use this in a classroom environment, uh, whether it's, uh, you know, formal school or private lessons or, you know, whatever. So I think I'm going to create that as, as a companion to this. I mean, the, the idea of this is to get people not afraid of looking at, you know, the, 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 the command prompt there. Oh, oh, look at that. See, it's, it's got my, uh, my little, uh, where, where are you? See? Those are the files I'm recording right now, or kind of recently recorded. <gasps> oh no, you're going to find out what 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 time I recorded my files. Okay, but but to get people not afraid of this, uh, you know, I, to get people not afraid of it, that's kind of what the goal is. All right, ink verb. Why this is awesome. This is my little software thingy for how I control my desktop. As a Linux, I install Linux, uh, Ubuntu. 
I install Ubuntu, and then I run this, this little script right here. And it sets up the desktop, makes everything beautiful and great. But I use the same thing, it's, it's like it's a, it's a companion thing, to control a VPS. I spin up an Ubuntu VPS, and it's a virtual private server, if you know what that is. It's, it's like a little, your own little mini computer in the cloud. It's like a virtual computer. Big, big supercomputer gives you a little virtual computer. It acts, talks, quacks like a little virtual computer. And you can host your own websites for business, email, whatever on that. And I have used this software, verb.inc, to make that work. Oh, by the way, this little scroll bar over here, you can scroll down, you can get some, some cool wallpapers and stuff for the project. You can click on this and find out what, you can click on this and find out more. The thing about this is, the, the EU law, if you get on my soapbox here, the EU law, there's this new EU law, you might have heard of this new internet law. You're supposed to keep your stuff secure on your server, information sharing and privacy stuff, new law from the, from the European Union. I was a little irritated with this. I'm, I'm mildly irritated with the EU law because, you know that cookie notice? Our website uses cookies. Click OK to accept. That, that's EU garbage. Websites use cookies. Uh, you, 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 you click on an ad you don't like, or you, you click, you, you, when you click somewhere on a website and move around, the website might save your preference on your computer so that when you go back to that website, it remembers that you don't like to see this or you prefer to look at it in blue or something. Or if you log in, it will remember that you logged in. That's how you don't have to log in each time you go to a website. It use, it's called cookies. There's a little tiny invisible files they are called cookies on your computer. Now, it's, it's part of history, internet, when you delete internet history, a lot of that is deleting cookies, which is why you delete your internet history, your browser history, you're not logged in anymore. Well, any, any idiot can figure out the, what these cookies are and that they're used. The only people who know what these cookies are, are already know that they're being used. The people who don't know that these cookies are being used, don't know what the cookies are, and they get scared. So the whole EU notice, our this website uses cookies. It's, it's absurd. It's a normal, common practice as part of normal computer code. Many, many websites do it. It's, it's not really a privacy thing unless it's written maliciously. You, you know, if you're, as long as you're following the law, there's nothing weird or suspicious about it. Um... Perhaps the notice should say what the cookies do in layman's terms. You know, there are cookies one, two, three. You know, you install an app on your phone. This is going to use, you know, your contacts. It's going to use your camera. It's going to use your microphone. It tells you that stuff. Well, maybe the cookie notice should list that stuff. Your, your user preferences, your login. You know, that's understandable, but it doesn't. This website uses cookies. If, if, I, if I know what a cookie is, I already know that. If I don't know what a cookie is, this is scary and I don't understand it. It's just, it was a bad law. It's irritating to a lot of people. The EU might change it. So I was kind of upset about this when the EU came up with a new law. But I did my homework like we're supposed to do anyway, and I found out this new EU law. Two important things. One, th th this privacy, all these new regulations about privacy and keeping users' information, letting them delete all of their information. Th th these rules only apply to companies with like 250 employees or more, like, like, like bigger companies. So, so little individuals working, uh, if, if you've got a, your own do-it-yourself website for your little company, from what I understand, check with your lawyers and stuff. There, there might be a reason that a company could be affected by this. But for the most part, little mom and pop shops who run an email or a little website are not going to be hurt by this. They're not affected by this. This is for the big gargantuan companies gobbling up lots of people's private information and keeping it secretly on there. Sir, hold on. I just found a bug that I've got to kill. This I've been dealing with these... And I'm going to get there. I got him. Okay. You didn't actually see it. 
<clears throat> I never said that I killed him. I just said I'm going to get him. So. The, these companies collecting lots of people's information is a problem. And the new EU law only addresses big fat companies with they already have teams of lawyers hired and they already have super expert computer programmers to obey all these complex, weird, goofy laws. It doesn't affect the little guy who's kind of drowned in all the paperwork. So that's, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Second thing though, about this EU law that I like, it proves that I was right all along of all this time. I've been doing stuff the right way. When I wrote this Verb Inc. software back here, I wrote it with an escape hatch. This basically automatically installs some very common useful web apps, human resource management, customer relations management, uh, cloud files, calendar contacts, you know, cloud sync, like your own Dropbox sort of dealio excuse me, your own Google Calendar sort of dealio, your own email server sort of dealio. It hosts all of that in the cloud and you can download it. Any of these you can install somewhere else. You could take it off of, off of a server, download it. It's, you, can, you can open it up and it's already useful for other types of things. Uh, like, 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 like you could like, like a computer geek could look inside of it and install it somewhere else, or you can use my software and copy it and create a copy on your own server without me all, all the same way and, and use the information. Unless of course you got my web domain or you know, you want to change your web domain that would change, but most of the information you can keep. So there it's kind of like an escape hatch. Like if you've been using an email server, you need to be able to download your email and put it somewhere else. If you've been doing contacts and you've got all your friends, you need to be able to download that list and, and export it and use it somewhere else. I think that's kind of what this new EU privacy law is about. And I've already been doing that with the Inkverb app, uh, which you can see on, on the GitHub site here. Um, the Git, GitHub site, you can learn about that. So I, I don't want to get into this, but this new EU law, if you hear people complaining about it, it's only for the big guys and it really does help the little guy. And I've got to say, from what I understand, I'm impressed. I'm really impressed. I, I now hope only that the EU will update their cookie policy so that it's readable. It's, it, it, it's, it uses layman's terms to, to identify like a number of maybe 20 possible different topics. You know, our cookies, remember your login, remember user preferences and their prefix, like, like the name at the beginning of the cookie is something, something like, you know, our cookies, uh, use your camera. Or, you know, or, or remember if you let us, you, you know, like on your phone, you know, this app wants to use your camera. This app wants to use your microphone. This app wants to use your files. You know, our cookies do this and this and this and have like 10, 20, whatever layman's terms, things that cookies do. I think that w would fit and be useful for the EU law. Uh, a lot of the, this website uses cookies and we're not going to tell you what those are. We're just going to scare you if you don't know. And, 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 and we're going to, we're going to bore you and waste your time if you already know. Anyhow, I'd love to see that change, but the new EO law is great. Okay. All right. Set it. Happy. Set it. Just wanted to say it. F11 and get out of here. Oh, we don't, we don't really need that anymore. What else was I going to, oh yeah, that's right. With me and my new direction. Um, I'm, I'm looking, as I, as I said, I'm, I'm going to do those, those videos on how to learn Linux, but I'm also going to get into, uh, I'm, I'm working with a, with a local guy here in Asia. Um, blues music. Yeah, I understand theory. Th music theory makes sense to me. I understand it. I get it. I, I, I get music theory, but this guy doesn't 
know the theory, but he can just sit down and play. It's amazing. Like he's not normal. And he's really, really happy. He's got the little keyboard set up that everybody wants. I, I might do some videos with him on, on, on the different vlogs and YouTube channels and stuff. But this guy, we're going to sit down and we're going to make together Blues Hannon. We're, we're going to make technique exercises that little, you know, kids, even five years old, if they can play, eight-year-olds, 10-year-olds can practice these exercises and they'll know how to play blues. They'll, they'll, they'll have the skills that, that, that it'll make it go. See, one of the things I've always done, I did this, I did this piano video in, in, the, in the piano series. I think you can find it on YouTube, I do believe. But, and of course, Daily Motion. I and I I explained that that's a way to teach theory through technique. I don't know if you totally get what that means. There are ideas about why certain notes together on a piano or another instrument why they sound a certain way. Why these notes together sound this way. It's not complicated. It's 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 called theory. It's called music theory. If you study music, you you, know, you do there's a time where you do theory. And and that's what it's supposed to be. Why do these notes sound this way together? How do you put the notes together? It's actually very very simple. But so many teaching methods make it super complicated, I think, so that teachers can keep their teaching jobs and so that companies can sell books. I mean, the harder something is, you know, the more people think they need something. But, I mean, if people stopped quitting piano, there wouldn't be as many piano books on theory and piano lessons sold. There'd be more music written. So, you know, there's kind of... But anyhow, I didn't say that. Um, <clears throat> don't tell anybody... Don't tell anybody that I just said that, okay? Don't keep that a secret between you and me, okay? So I'm, I'm looking at this overall problem of piano student myself. I was a piano teacher myself for 10 years. And I, what I would, how I would teach theory wasn't with a book. I might grab a paper, draw out the circle of fifths. I've done that video. I've done that. I might do it again. Circle of fifths. This is what it is. This is how it works. But most of the theory that I teach... It was that. Dun, 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 dun. Rather than just practicing the chord and the scale, I would highlight the one and the five and how that works. And then practice certain changes. And none of it was in any technique or exercise or chord book ever before. It was my invention, the way I would do this. And it would program the theory into the fingers. So a student, a piano student, that's what I was teaching, would learn the theory by practicing the exercise. It was the same thing. The, the exercise to make you play better very, 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 very quickly. Practice this exercise, you'll, you'll like, wow, how'd you get so good so fast? Well, I exercised. You know, rather than trying to just read the music with weak fingers, not knowing how to play, just play this thing again and again and again and again and again and again and again, and, again, and then you'll be good. I would take the theory teaching and that's what they'd practice, and they'd do both at the same time. So they get older, oh, yeah, I'll just go to the five. How do you know that's a five? Uh, because when my finger does this, that's the five. Really? You know that? Yeah, Jesse, okay, you know, two birds, one stone. Not that, not that we're killing animals. I mean, that, that's terrible. Animals never die, and, and, and evil, horrible people talk about animals dying, and I'm not one of them. So I, two birds, one stone is no reference in any way especially if an SJW is listening. Two birds, one stone has nothing to do with killing. Horrible things like that. No, 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 no. That's not what we're talking about. But two birds, one stone, or five, or one, together, like the one and then, like, hit, like the one and then the... But doing everything all at once is, is uh, yeah, blues Hannon, putting theory and stuff together. And one other thing I think I might... We're working on is going back to the pink right, uh, the the pink right thing, the pink right project, and writing a book on on English noun case, which I suppose I could get into later. Now, because I, I did the handwriting thing, which you saw, but I might get into the noun case. All right. So as I'm as I'm looking at all this, 
And I mentioned the podcast today. I'm, I'm having I'm, I'm at this crossroads where I've got to choose my path and what I'm going to ask and all that. I'm, I'm at that place where I'm saying, should I try to become super awesome computer code? Like I'm a good computer programmer, but should I try to become super awesome? Or should I focus on writing more stories, making more simple teaching guides and keep up a little on my programming skills, but start the company that writes the good software I want to. I'm at that crossroads of, of what skills to continue learning next. Now, I've already decided that I'm not learning any new skills. I've learned enough. Forget when was it that I decided that I had learned, I had started my last new skill. I think it was with LMMS. I think about the time I was studying LMMS, the, uh, it's a music writing software, uh, which you can get in, in Linux, Mac, or Windows. I think about the time I was doing that, I had decided, when, when I started the JACE1, JACE, J-A-C-E dot O-N-E, the JACE1 project, my music project. In fact, I think you can see, if you go to jesse.house, it's the JACE1 thing, it's, it's like this guy in a tie and like a mask over his mouth, all you see is the mask and no head. I think about the time I started the JACE 1 project, I decided I wasn't learning anything new. I was going to take all the skills I've started learning and I'm just going to learn more of the skills that I've already started learning. So that one, the skill I think I'm going to learn next is life coaching. Probably not so much to help other people, although some of my life coaching ideas might show up in these podcasts. The skill with life coaching, it's more about being able to coach myself because, you know, life has hard decisions to make. I, I suppose it would help me make good little nuggets to, to, to drip here and there. Uh, it, it fits with the Avenue Guru brand, avenue.guru. I call it guru because .guru was available. Uh, I think life coaching is the thing I need to study next. It's, it's, it's like... I want to study 3D so I can design stuff and get it going. I want to focus on computer programming languages so I can, you know, write a piece of writing software that the world really needs. The, the, you know, as, as I do this pink write stuff, you saw the, the handwriting curriculum. As I do all this stuff, it's, it's getting really, really plain to me that... I need to write a, a, a simple typing writing piece of software that will do printing and PDF files and, you know, write your letter and it'll just print it automatically. It, it'll, it'll put it into a book automatically. It'll format it. It'll, it'll send it to an ebook automatically. It, it'll make a book you can print on Amazon automatically. I, I, I'm, I'm really, it'll print correctly in CMYK automatically. I'm really getting to the place where I'm, I'm thinking that I need to write the software that's going to do this well. And as much as I'd like to go learn the computer code to make that software, I think that I need to study life coaching first because life coaching is going to teach me how to get my priorities in order because, because you can only make arts and crafts, build buildings, finish products, finish projects, lead organizations, write ideas. You can only make artwork. You can only produce anything as well as you've produced the order in your heart. 